What you can see here is that we've got x squared plus y squared equals 17 and y equals x squared plus three. Since we know what y is equal to, let's go ahead and put that in place of y in the first equation. That's the substitution method. So what we're doing is we're trying to combine these two equations so we just have one variable, one equation. So let's go ahead and do that. We've got x squared plus the quantity x squared plus three squared equals 17. Now remember when you do a substitution you want to put it in parentheses, you want to treat it like a group. So it's this quantity squared. So now what we're going to do is we're going to foil this out, which if you want, you can think of when you square something, it's like having two of that quantity. Okay. And so now what we're going to do is we're just going to do the foil method or you can distribute twice like so. So that gives us x squared plus x to the fourth plus 3x squared plus another 3x squared plus 9 equals 17. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get everything on one side of the equation, set it equal to zero. So we've got x to the fourth plus, uh, let's see, 6x squared plus 1x squared, which is 7x squared. Okay, and if we subtract 17 from both sides, we get negative 8. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to factor this. It factors to x squared times x squared, which gives us x to the fourth. What two numbers multiply to negative 8 but add to 7? That's going to be positive 8 and negative 1 because you can see 8x squared and negative 1x squared is positive 7x squared. Now all we have to do is set each group equal to 0 and solve. So we're going to go ahead and do that. We've got x squared plus 8 is equal to 0, and we also have x squared minus 1 is equal to 0. Here if we add 1 to both sides, we get x squared equals 1, and if we take the square root of both sides, remember when you take the square root of both sides, you get two answers, positive or negative, 1. And over here, if I subtract 8 from both sides, I get x squared is equal to negative 8, and if I take the square root of negative 8, you actually get imaginary numbers, right? So this actually comes out to uh, positive or negative 2i root 2. But when you get an imaginary number, that just means that there's no real solution for this particular uh, part here. This is an extraneous uh, root, an extra or false solution. What we're really trying to do here is when we look at x squared plus y squared equals 17, this is actually a circle. And we look at y equals x squared plus 3, this is actually a parabola. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to find those points of intersection of these two graphs, right? So here, this just gives us a false answer. This is not a point of intersection. But over here, we have x equals 1. We also have x equals negative 1. If we take 1 and we put it back into either one of these uh, two equations, either for this x or this x, I'm going to do the bottom one because it's a little bit simpler. 1 squared is 1 plus 3 is 4, so that's 1 comma 4. If we put negative 1 in, negative 1 squared is 1, plus 3 is 4. So we're getting 1 comma 4 and negative 1 comma 4, and you can see those are the two points where this parabola and the circle intersect. So that was example 1. Let's look at example 2 now. Here we're going to use the elimination method, and when you do the elimination method, what you're trying to do is you're trying to add these two equations together in such a way that either the x's cancel out or the y's cancel out. So you just end up with one equation, one variable, right? So the key here is, let's see, do we want to eliminate the x's or the y's? I think the y's are going to be a little bit easier. If I multiply this top equation by 2, that'll give us negative 2y squared, and we add it to positive 2y squared. Those y squareds are going to cancel. We'll just have an equation with x's in it. So let me go ahead and do, distribute the 2. That's going to give us 2x squared minus 2y squared equals negative 10. So I just distribute the 2 to so the entire equation, left side, right side. And then result, I put as this equation here. Now if we add straight down, we get 5x squared. The y squareds cancel, and we get 20. If we divide both sides by 5, we get 4. And if we take the square root of both sides, remember when you take the square root of both sides, you get two answers, plus or minus. 2, right? So what we have here now is when x is equal to 2, let's see. Well, let's go ahead and put 2. Let's put it back into this top equation right here. So we have uh, 2 squared minus y squared equals negative 5. 2 squared is 4. Okay, and if we subtract 4 from both sides, we get negative 9. And if we multiply both sides by negative 1, we get y squared is equal to positive 9. And if we take the square root of both sides, we get plus or minus 3. So what that means is when x is 2, y could be 3, or when x is 2, y could be negative 3. But remember how x could be positive 2 or negative 2. So let's look at uh, what happens when you put negative 2 in. So negative 2 squared minus y squared equals negative 5 gives us 4 minus y squared equals negative 5. Subtract 4 again. You can see we're getting the same kind of setup here. We have uh, subtract 4 from both sides. We're getting negative y squared is equal to negative 9. 
y squared equals positive nine if we multiply both sides by negative one. And if we take the square root, you can see we're getting plus or minus three again. So that means it could be negative two comma three or negative two comma negative three. So here we're actually getting four solutions. And the reason for this is, is because what we have here is we actually have a hyperbola and a parabola. And it's gonna look something like this. It's gonna be like, a, say for example, you have, um, I'm just gonna do kind of a rough sketch here, but let's just say for example, your hyperbola could look something like this and your parabola could, uh, did I say parabola, your ellipse, your ellipse could look something like that. And you can see that there's actually like four points where they're crossing here, so four points of intersection. And so that's why we got four solutions. Here there was only two points of intersection. So it kind of depends. You could have a four, two, three, one, zero. You know, they might not intersect at all. So great job. If you like my teaching style and you want to check out some of the courses that I put together to help you in your math class, I've got one for Algebra 1, Algebra 2, ACT Math, as well as SAT Math. You can check out uh, right down there in that lower right-hand corner uh, to go over and see what courses I have available. I look forward to helping you in the future videos. I'll talk to you soon.